why define woke just for your listeners as the making sacred of historically marginalized race, gender, and sexual identity groups, uh, from which flows uh, a, a sort of inductive philosophy that says equal outcomes and emotional harm protection or emotional safety for those minority groups is the highest value in society. And because a lot of young people uh, essentially have taken on these beliefs, it's made them very intolerant of anybody who criticizes those beliefs or who has says anything that might be perceived as offensive to even the most s sensitive member of one of these groups. Um, and so that's leading them to be very intolerant of different views, different views around the sacred values. If it's not around the sacred values, then they're tolerant. But if it is around the sacred values, they're highly intolerant to the point of demanding uh, people be, you know, no platform to cancel. And I don't want to broad brush and say it's all young people. It isn't. There's a split and there's a strong split, right? But amongst a significant group, which on some surveys, you know, I say, uh, if, if you look at that student survey covering 200 institution, top institutions in the U.S., 50,000, um, you're getting sort of 70 to 80 percent. You're only getting about 10 to 20 percent saying that somebody who says BLM is a hate group or trans is a mental disorder should be allowed to speak on campus. So you are you have a very large majority in the anti free speech camp. When you when you're talking about the strong split, is that strong in the in terms of the percentage of the strong opposition, or is it just that their views and attitudes are sort of becoming more and more polarized? I think they are becoming polarized, and I'm trying to think of which questions. You know, if you take a question like, "Should J.K. Rowling be dropped by her publisher uh, in Britain?" You know, anyone over fifty, it's like under five percent, basically, who agree with that she should be dropped, cancelled because of her views on the trans issue. Um, among young people who have an opinion, it's fifty-fifty. <laughs> And but I think that I think that the so that gives you a sense of just what an earthquake is coming down the line. Um, now there is a caveat, which is that polling of young people is is notoriously tricky, and and the ones who answer the polls are probably very disproportionately uh, from that woke side of the ledger. But still, even with that in mind, I mean, clearly they are a more intolerant generation, and that's going to mm -hmm. affect our free speech culture. But on the other hand, you have a very powerful anti-woke subculture too. It's more male, for example, uh, among young people. And we're seeing things, you know, I'm trying to think of some good examples. I mean, one might be um, the significant conservative voting in Canada. And even in the polls picking up in the U.S. now, there's 40 percent Trump support there was a poll done in Canada where half of the under 25s in Canada said they'd vote Trump. Now, this is in a country that has very intense woke indoctrination in all its institutions. Um, so I think there is definitely a sort of significant resistance to the dominant culture uh, amongst young people. And, and, I, and, and so what we see is there's greater, there's a bigger spread of views among younger people on a lot of culture war issues. And so that would tell us there's probably going to be polarization, a more intense polarization on these questions in like 20 years when the median voter is is a Zoomer, you know, or a millennial. So, so, 